All right, well, it is 11 o'clock, uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just a quick note, thank you all for joining us for our very first virtual Technically Speaking series. Um, this is a mini series that will be reoccurring. Uh, there will probably be anywhere between two and three events each month um, that feature UAT faculty and staff. Um, so definitely uh, keep your eyes open for future events. There are some already scheduled on our Eventbrite. Uh, today joining us is Dr. Mark Smith, the program champion for business technology. And he's going to give a brief presentation on effectively uh, leading teams virtually. And uh, after his presentation is over, there will be a short Q&A session. If you have any questions, uh, definitely feel free to type them out and we will get to them as soon as we can. So over to you, Dr. Mark. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Dr. Mark Smith, and I'll be uh, facilitating and your host, so to speak, for this uh, little venture down leading, managing, and remote uh, individuals, especially at this time if, uh, that we're in. Uh, pretty much everyone is virtual, so to speak. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get it started. So I'm going to share my screen because I've created a slide deck to go off of for you guys. So you don't have to just stare at me the whole time. All right. So uh, again, welcome. Um, uh, welcome and uh, chiming in for uh, UAT's, uh, t technically speaking, uh, uh, talks. And so I'm your host, Dr. Mark Shark smith and I'll be taking you down this venture as we go. So, uh, so leading and managing remotely, I can't see you. Now, typically, um, in the past, I've done, um, you know, talks and lectures on this material, specifically on, you know, mixed environments or just like a handful of people remote or a handful of teams. Um, but in this day and age of what we're dealing with with this pandemic and um, kind of how this might you know transcend into uh, you know more regular style workplace, um, you definitely want to get used to this kind of leading and managing circumstance and scenario. So, first uh, question to pose to you, and you know what are remote workers? Which is you know the typically in a in a newer work environment or <laughs> most work environments, people have pockets of them, but pretty much they're just every employee that's not working on site with you. Um, these can be, you know, local, they can work from home, they can be in the U.S. or abroad, depending on your certain circumstances or what your, uh, you know, setup is for your organization. But as of right now, pretty much every employee and colleague of yours right now should be a remote style worker. <laughs> so um, now everybody's learning to play in that same kind of field. And so as leaders and managers that may have not been accustomed to this type of leadership or management style, we have to kind of adapt. Now, to start with the positives of the, of the cool things about having remote workers or just being working remotely in the first place is, you know, uh, there's less handholding as physical or physically you're unable to provide that kind of like handholding support or being right behind them or be kind of like mouse clicking with them, so to speak. I mean, there's screen sharing and other tools that we have, but for the most part, that dynamic isn't there. Uh, so, but that's a good thing because that means you can focus on more metrics and doing things of that nature. A lot of times they can work around the clock and a lot of the studies have shown that typically people that are working remotely tend to work more hours and work more continuously than people that are set in, in a sedentary position for a long period of time. Uh, like I said, they tend to put in more hours. You can manage through outputs and metrics and doesn't have to be face-to-face -face contact also to speak. Um, you can set expectations and guidelines and just let them go. There's less social interaction or interpersonal conflict among employees. So like those little clamorings or little uh, tips that may happen from people working in close proximity for long periods of time don't really necessarily happen. Um, and typically there's less need meetings as needed. Maybe not now, uh, depending on your organization, they get very meeting happy. But another positives for working remotely is you don't have to commute. Um, you don't have to get angry about traffic. You don't necessarily even have to put on pants. So it's, it's actually a very uh, great thing to do and a great thing to have. And, uh, you know, we make light of it the best that we can. Some of the negatives, though, uh, with remote working is they're not physically in front of you. So it's a little tougher to do coaching and it's a little tougher to see signs and warning signals about them uh, having problems or issues or things of that nature. It can be kind of difficult to monitor that work as you might need to have, you know, they might have strange hours, depending if they work abroad or if they just work uh, differently. And as far as like the, the family dynamic of however they decide to manage their day, it, it could put you in a, a circumstance that you're not actively working the same time as they are. Um, another, it, it's good and bad that they tend to, to put in more time than typically when they're on site, um, but that could potentially turn into a negative overall as, as far as like burnout and um, getting, I guess like just 
<laughs> over uh, overworked as far as that's concerned. Uh, communication is limited, so it can cause miscommunications amongst the employees and yourself uh, when you're trying to give direction or when you're trying to figure out exactly how things are working. And it can take longer to find out if they're failing or having difficulty. Like I said, you're basing everything off metrics. You can't see them day-to-day -day operations. You can't see their um, nonverbal cues. You can't see if they're having a bad day, if they're depressed, or if they're having any type of issues of that nature. Um, it also can create communication conflict. Um, just a single uh, issue of doing like a Discord or a uh, IM chat or an email with all caps by accident can cause like people think they're getting yelled at. There's always that, like I said, when nonverbal communication is not involved, then it gets, a lot of things can be mis, uh, miscommunication, misconstrued. So you want to make sure that, you know, that is a negative of remote working because a lot of times things can be taken out of context, so to speak. And then of course, the hardest part about um, you know remote working and remote workers in general and in leading this way is it's tough to keep a team environment with a group of on offsite people, which uh, many that have had remote teams in the past before this pandemic kind of pushed everyone to that situation is that they you know they they can be quite easily isolated or, or felt like they're not part of the team and things of that nature and be left out. So. Um, without now them having them in a like close knit little group and being able to do team builders directly of that nature, you have to get very creative with how you're going to do that. And we'll discuss it as we go. But there's, well, like I said, positives and negatives to any type of, uh, you know, coin flip when it comes to remote workers. And we're going to focus on specifically today is we're going to talk about some management strategies, motivation tactics, communications, some current issues facing remote workers right now in this uh, situation of. Um, social distancing and stay at home orders, and then indicators for looking for success and failures as we move through. So, what you want to keep in mind when you're thinking about how that's going to all work out for you is like how you're going to, you know, the tactics, strategies, and the things that you need to watch out for. Because not only is you are you remote, your entire team is remote, and you have to be able to, you know, put in context how to work that through and make it out to be a good situation for everybody. So. Let's start with the management strategies to start off the bat. So productivity for management strategies, because like I said, you don't necessarily, you don't have them right in front of you. They're not sitting in front of you anymore. You have to remotely manage these individuals. Tracking hours, attendance, and outputs is going to be your best friend to ensure that your team is doing what they need to. You know, um, are they you know, at their desks and logging hours the way they need to, that they're attending every single day <laughs> and doing what they need to? And the biggest thing is their outputs. As long as they're meeting the goals and deadlines and things that they have to for progression, that's the biggest thing. Um, so having good metric tools in place makes your job managing and leading remotely much easier to track and, and work through. Also using progressive systems of tracking, uh, Gantt charts, flow charts, you know, burn downs, whatever system it is that your organization or you're using to track progress of a progression of a project that you're working on that makes it much easier for you to see that the the, the bar is so kind of is getting pushed that the needle is moving so to speak and that everything is kind of working how it needs to um, also having collaborative documents like google docs or, or documents that can be spread amongst the entire team to be worked on and to be filled out directly uh, as everyone's working in continuously is a big thing um, all this makes it much easier for them to collaborate, communicate together, and also kind of takes you out of the picture of always being the middleman between your employees during this kind of time of everyone being remote. So having collaborative documents is a key thing there. Another big thing you have to keep in mind that a lot of people are moving to this environment and are not familiar with that kind of setup. And some people really do well in, in a remote-based setup, and some don't. And so a lot of times you need to facilitate the kind of a structure. So having them pre-select hours of active work time is a big thing. Now you can be lenient. Of course, we're all working from home, so you can be lenient and you can give them the freedom of, of picking and choosing their hours to make it more convenient for them. Uh, but they still want to have like set times to help time manage of when they're going to be actively ready to go for you at their desk. And so, so to speak, uh, so making sure that they have that. That also allows the rest of you and the team members to also know who's available to ask questions or to get uh, work from or to just have banter back and forth when you need to. Um, always, if you don't have it already, setting up an open chat system for the team to always communicate. You know, a Discord, an IM system, uh, you know, there's a Teams channel, whatever it is that your organization's working off of to do that. Or if you need to even set up one yourself, that's 
you know, that's something you should do because you want an open, quick dialogue between uh, communication lines of your, of your employees regularly. So um, that way it doesn't bog down the email uh, chains and the email uh, conversations and people get overwhelmed with email and also allows uh, the ability to have quick exchanges of information without having to do um, conference calls or just picking up the phone and, and doing that nature as well. Because that's not always availability and it's not always the best uh, you know, for quick communications. Um, and then with that, you also want to make sure that you create a consistent communication system. So some kind of structure of how you're going to be communicating from a distance. That's going to be a big thing as well, because you want to make sure that you're having this set up there. Uh, so that way it's not an issue. And then everyone is on the same page and on board with how that's going to operate and work. Uh, so that way everyone knows that if you're going to be co communicating a certain uh, material or information, you go through email channels, chat is reserved for this, uh, all those different natures, you want to kind of have like some guidelines and structures to go with that. Uh, also using video communication with consistent meeting times. You want to keep that, that organization or that consistency throughout um, this kind of setup for a remote worker. Because like I said, if you leave them to their vices, a lot of times people will move their schedules around, they'll adjust, and some people thrive in that environment, and a lot of them don't. A lot of them need the structure, and moving from, a lot of people moving from a very structured office workplace to a completely remote setup is a big change, and it does, and we're throwing them into the grinder, so to speak, to make them adapt quite quickly. So it's much easier to give them parameters, give them schedules, give them, okay, we're going to meet these days and weeks and times. We're going to make sure you have video chat and set up for this. And it's also just a good check-in to make sure that you actually get some face-to-face -face time with the team members as well. Because these individuals are used to seeing you and the rest of the group on a daily basis. And to take that away is not always the greatest thing. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have that consistency. And then a big thing is also beware of chat or email overload, because there is kind of a good and bad amount of each of these things. Uh, we all can joke and say like, you know, <laughs> we, we check our inbox and we have like 60 new emails. There's nothing more daunting than that because we know that more than half of that is probably stuff that's not pertinent or not really detrimental to our job. And same thing with chats. If chats get way too convoluted or way too pushed down, a lot of uh, pertinent information gets pushed all the way to the top and you miss it or the conversation gets taken in a way left field kind of context and it's completely just not work related or and it's not just like um, conjecture and banter that's, that's good for the morale. So you wanna make sure that that's always taking advantage of that portion of it, all right? Now, so those are management strategies that you can work off of and you should use for that portion of it. So managing is a key thing for this portion of it and management is just you kind of like facilitating this environment. Now comes the motivation. So motivation tactics are going to be a little bit different because this is more of the emotional push and inspiration that goes beyond it. And so the, the, I guess like not the crappy part, but uh, well, yeah, it's kind of because a lot of true good managers and leaders like to use their charisma. They like to use pep talks. They like to be kind of in the mix, so to speak, with their employees from a completely remote setup a lot of that is taken out and you're not able to have that kind of energy to feed into your team members. So you're going to have to kind of, you know, adjust that. So um, some things for motivation tactics are like communicating frequently with positive feedback. So a lot of times with remote workers, just in general before this pandemic is they would get exiled a lot. And a lot of the managers and leadership would just kind of know that they were there, but not really give them much time of day. Now with everyone kind of moving to that setup, you can't let that happen because everyone's in the same boat now and everyone's working remotely and, and from a distance for the most part that you know is in this setup. So communication has to be frequent and it needs to be positive and uplifting because we're, we're dealing with a kind of uneasy time right now. And so you want to be the kind of consistency that they need and give them positive feedback. It's a good time also that if you haven't or have already uh, created traditions and unique team stuff to do it. Uh, I mean, myself, when I used to, uh, when I was in the corporate setting and I would, I always had like uh, uh, ice cream social Friday and things of that nature, just to kind of keep the team in a, a nice flux. Also, I would start every single day with a music video and an 80s song in order for them to just kind of get uh, through the gesture. Uh, but you want to do the same thing. Now, you just have to get creative when it comes to remotely. And that could be, you know, sending them all um, inspirational quotes that could be uh, having during before the team meeting, have everyone come in and you like play some music for them or you have them talk about their day 
or have them say something creative. It doesn't matter. It's some kind of tradition or unique thing that you're bringing them together for them to be prepared for and them to still have that team building environment and setup, even though you're going to be doing it from a distance. Um, be sure to give lots of recognition, more so than you used to when you saw them day-to-day -day operation, because uh, they're going to be going hours, if not days sometimes, without any kind of communication back and forth with various leadership and groups. You want to make sure that you are that uh, consistency for them. Make them feel secure in their work environment. All right, right now, as much as we don't really talk about it, all of us feel a little uneasy about the future of our current positions and our organizations and everything in nature. Everything seems fine right now, but it could turn worse. It could get better. The unknown is, is crippling to many people. And it's, you know, it's a control factor that's taken away from us. So make sure that you fake you secure and make people feel secure about their job positions. I mean, we, you in this conference or myself, we haven't seen, um, you know, the push and pull that's come from it, but many people have lost their positions. Many companies are going on furloughs. Many people are doing layoffs. Like that's a thing and it's scary. And it's that thing that many organizations and leadership don't like to talk about. You shouldn't shy away from that. You should like secure, tell them that, you know, we're still here. Everything's good. And just make them feel good about, and secure about what their position is and what they're doing. Uh, Cause uh, you know, not knowing or keeping that kind of in the dark, so to speak, is scary. And it can make uh, your employees quite uneasy. And then with you not there physically to, to kind of put them into use and to tell them everything's okay and for them to show up to the building and know it's still there on a day-to-day -day basis, it can be really scary. So you want to make sure that you are securing them and making sure that their work environment is, is happy and they feel secure in what they're doing right then and there. You know, when they go to the grocery store, or they go outside of their house, that's not your <laughs> problem, so to speak. But in your little bubble context of work, you want to make them feel safe and, and secure as much as you can. Another thing that many organizations and many leadership have gotten and accustomed to just in general is gamification. But now is, is definitely even a better time to gamify the work for the simple fact that you can, you can make it a game, but you can make it more of a team building type setup that can be, you know, bantered through a, a Discord or an IM based channel. And you can have that kind of like fun banter back and forth to keep that team camaraderie going. Because the, the normal, you know, Josh and each other of, of them sitting close in proximity and the normal kind of family dynamic that teams typically kind of gravitate to as long as you create that environment, that's kind of gone because they're not there uh, when next to each other. They can't just like tap each other on the shoulders or go to lunch with each other or go to breaks and things of that nature and have that kind of you know, casual social interaction and the fun banter that can come from uh, teams that are well equipped to one another. So gamifying the work and kind of giving them some side projects to do or saying kind of making it a fun environment, that's the fun, good thing to do to keep them all engaged and keep them working together and keep them still communicating one another. The big thing now also is having social team builders set up for employees to interact. Now, do not, I know a lot of times leadership and organizations, they, they take it for granted that all their team members are in one place. And then if they want to like congregate or do something, they set something aside and just tell them to go do something after work or, or something of that nature. Or they take advantage of a lunch break together and do potlucks and things like that. You don't have that anymore. So as an organization or as a leader, you need to facilitate the team builder setups for employees to actually interact. So this could be a giant conference call where they all just like, you know, talk or, or do some conjecture like I don't even know you could facilitate a virtual happy hour I have no idea how uh, like how you're going to choose it or what your team dynamics going to be but you want to still set up those things to have that fun interaction with them whether or not it's them all taking lunch at the same time and you like have a, a, a zoom meeting like this with everybody just kind of like sitting around eating lunch together which we've done at UAT as a virtual lunchroom uh, to kind of get that camaraderie in that meeting place back that they missed, so to speak, or just that normal like human social <laughs> interaction that's not there anymore. Push it and do it. Because like I said, a lot of times, just in general, when I used to talk about remote workers before this pandemic, I would have to tell them to include them in the team builders and don't forget about them. And just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. They're not working. Now everybody you have is pretty much in the same situation. You need to figure out and you can't just rely on your, char your charisma and the ability to have everybody in one place to make that all work. So make sure that you have, you build these social interactions to get team people to do it and set up that giant Brady Bunch looking uh, panel to have everyone just kind of talk and have fun and, and discuss things that are not work related to go off of that. Uh, it's you know, play like, I don't even know, like play Hollywood squares. If you guys, if you're old enough to remember that game, <laughs> I always like think of Brady Bunch or Hollywood squares when I see like the giant bunches of faces on the zoom meeting. So have fun with that portion of it. 
But those are motivation tactics. And that is something that you're in charge of as a leader and a manager. You need to keep your team engaged and motivated. So that's on you. You can't just say like, oh, well, they're away. So they're just going to do their jobs. And communication is the cornerstone and the backbone of how this is all going to work. Like I said, be consistent and routine with set communication times and set. This is for accountability, but it's also to keep that structure that people, most people need that kind of time organization. When uh, time management is something that most people have trouble doing. And if you take that, like just the simple fact of they're starting work at a time and leaving work at a time, you take that away. A lot of times that's chaos. And then there might be distractions at home and a whole bunch of other stuff that goes along with that. You want to make sure that you're setting some structure, some deadlines, some things that give them some parameters to work off of. Be attentive with quick responses. I can't say this enough. When I've had to lead teams remotely or if I had people that worked remotely, I always made it a point to answer their questions as fast as humanly possible because I know that they're, if the, what they want is pertinent and also they need to feel like they're actually, you know, uh, there, so to speak, because in the, the on-site workers have the privilege of just walking up to me and asking me a question right then and there. Virtual and remote workers don't. And so now that everyone's in the same boat, you have to be very attentive to that because in their expectation mind, they should be able to ask you a question and get almost an immediate response. So you want to make sure that you're very quick to these response setups. That's why, that's why you want to have multiple channels of communication. So if they send you an email and it goes into like this email pool that you're trying to get through, that's a little bit tougher to get to, but if they send you an instant message or something through Discord or, or like a Teams message or something of that nature, then you can answer it quite quickly that way. Um, or if you're like me, I answer emails almost as fast as I see them just because it's like a compulsion of mine. But uh, you want to make sure that you're very responsive and you're very quick with it and you're attentive to your team members. While you're in your, your bubble of work, which is for leaders and managers is pretty much almost like a 24-hour day uh, process, especially now, um, be quick with the responses because even if it doesn't feel like it's something that's super pertinent to you or something then that's like uh, catastrophic to them it might be and so you want to make sure you give them that information quite quickly and that's like i said having multiple channels of communication because relying on one is, is a bad thing because everything is going to get kind of bogged down and shoved into one place and bottlenecked it also puts you in a if one of them drops or internet connectivity or something of that nature issues you need to have other modes so you want to make sure you have um, you know, conference calls, uh, with video chat, you want to make sure you have an open line of communication in Discord, you know, collaborative documentation that they can all work off of at the same time for progression. Whatever it is, you want to have multiple modes. Phone, text, if you're okay with that portion of it, do it as well, um, however you need to do that. Uh, do not shy away from video conferences and phone calls. Like this is, this is a, a pertinent time where people need to still have social connections, even though we can't physically be like, you know, you're supposed to not be six feet from one another. So um, video conferencing is a big thing. Uh, we do it a lot in our workplace and most workplaces now are starting to adopt it because that's the way we're going to have to do it. And then phone calls is still your best friend. If something needs to be answered quite quickly and it can't be done through a chat and needs to have to add like a, a actual phone conversation, um, either pick up the phone or set up a quick Zoom conference or a Teams conference or whatever software you're working off of and do it. And that way that dialogue can go much faster because trying to, email explain something uh you know could you could speak it in probably a minute or two and it'd be very clear and easily understood you'd be writing an email for the next 15 20 minutes trying to articulate what you want and then it could be miscommunicated and not work out the way you need to uh like i said don't email overload the team have multiple channels not all communication has to be work related as well i say this uh with kind of like uh keep an eye on it though we'll talk about that in a bit you want, the, you want the, the team to have regular banter and casual conversation as well. You don't want everything to be just work-related because when everyone's in a workplace, that's not, that's not it. We, the, the reality is like when you have a team of 12 to 13 to 15 people in a single space, they are not working every single second of every single minute for the next eight to 10 hours. That's just not how it works. They have breaks, they have conjecture, they talk, they have communication, they have social they talked amongst one another. It's a dynamic, and that is what creates the work environment to be a positive place for them to want to work. You can't force it to be that way just because everyone's working remotely. So if you set up a, a instant message channel or the emailing channel, it's okay, and you want to provoke them and push them to still have casual conversations and social interactions amongst that platform. Just don't let it get to the point where it overloads the system where there's no actual real good content coming out of any of it. And it's all being just bogged down by um, 
you know, two people having a conversation about their dogs. Like that's, you don't want that, but you still want them to have casual conversations and to do off put it. So um, you might even want to set up two different uh, types of, of channels where one's mostly for social, one's mostly for work. And it's okay for them to communicate on both. And uh, because people can still work and have a conversation through chat, like it's not like they can't multitask. So um, that's okay to do and you want to make sure that you actually promote that and you want that type of environment and communication. So you don't want everything to become rigid just because you all work remotely. You still want to keep it loose, friendly, and fun. And you want to keep that family dynamic that you've worked so hard to create and going from that portion of it. Now, some of the current issues that are different than typical remote working setups is there's, there's an issue right now of like social isolationism and loneliness. So if you have certain people that don't have a family dynamic at home, they're, isolated, they're pretty much like quarantined by themselves or, or maybe with one roommate or something of that nature, it's that social interaction, as much as we try to disdain from it and we all kind of naturally maybe are more introvert and extrovert, doesn't make a difference. This is all still affecting us. Being told we can't interact with others is still a daunting phase. Even if you naturally don't kind of gravitate to wanting to go out and, and, and socially interact and having fun with people, et cetera, Having it taken away completely is a whole different ball game and being told that you have to stay in your house for, for majority of your time, <laughs> not only leaving for, to go to the grocery store or to the doctor, like that's, it's tough. And so, and the longer this, this stays, a lot of people can push into depression, feel lonely and feel isolated and feel like they're by themselves. And so you want to make sure you keep an eye on that portion of it. You want, because as a leader and a manager, your job is to make sure that your team members and all your staff members feel that they're part of something and they're enjoying their workplace. So make sure that you keep an eye on the social isolation and loneliness. And we'll discuss that for indicators to watch for, but that's something that's going on right now. And so you want to make sure that you're being very uh, positive. You're being very social. You're making them feel secure about their workplace. You're making them feel while they're in your like environment and they're in the, the workplace environment of yours being uh, remote working, that you make them feel secure, happy, and that they matter. And that you keep that social dynamic so they don't feel like they're lonely because they're gonna be spending a lot of time by themselves. So at least give them time during the workplace hours that they just designate for themselves working remotely that they can interact with their fellow uh, employees and colleagues and you on a continuous and regular basis. And that, that way they can get that kind of like social interaction need out uh, that they may not always have said they wanted, but a lot of people miss that portion of it. I mean, we all, none of us miss traffic, but we probably still miss the banter and the fun conversations that we have with our colleagues and our coworkers. And you wanna make sure you give that back to them there. Now, um, distractions at home, that's something too. Many people have families, of course, and a lot of people's kids are not in school right now because they close the schools. They might be going to school virtually or there's a certain circumstance or set up that nature, but they, they have now this home distraction. And for anybody that's been a career working from home type person or remote worker for a long period of time, you, we all know the same kind of rhetoric and we can all joke about it that when people, when you say you work from home, most people don't understand that you actually still have a job. They just assume you're just always home all the time. <laughs> and so uh, you know, you'll have your, your parents and your, your in-laws like asking you to do stuff at weird hours or you'll, people just assume that you're available at random times of the day because you work from home. So you must not really do anything. Uh, I know it's a joke and it's funny, but anyway, any of you guys that worked from home for a long period of time, understand what I'm talking about, but, um, distractions at home happen. Like there's, there's chores, there's kids, there's things of that nature. There's screaming in the background, whatever it is, there's, there's, there's cats cleaning themselves in the corner. There's animals, there's all that stuff. Um, that can be daunting. I mean, uh, I know for me personally, I do a lot of my majority of my clerical work based stuff at night just because it's quiet. I mean, I have a, a four year old at home and my, my wife's at home too. So like, it's not that we have a house full of craziness, but <laughs> it's just a little bit easier uh, to kind of like concentrate that time. So you want to make sure that that's something you're, you're accommodating and watching for as well and also working around whatever it needs to be done. So that way it's not uh, taken effect of it. Uh, time management is big. And like I said, Remote working is a skill set, honestly, and it's something that people get used to over time. You know, contract working, working from home, things of that nature. Not everybody does it. So when you take an entire workforce and just dump them at home with not much of a facilitation or easing into this type of situation or anything of that nature, not to mention like the technical issues and all that stuff that come with that, and they're not used to it, time management can become a, a bitch. So you want to make sure that you are really kind of like giving them that structure the best that you can. You can't helicopter them because you don't see them and you're not going to stay 
And I can say, hey, conference me, and I'm just going to sit here and stare at you for the next eight hours, <laughs> make sure that you're doing everything you need to. But you want to make sure you have meetings and set times and, and consistent check-ins and things of that nature, and they log their hours and they set the times that they're going to be available and things of that nature. And it gives them that kind of time management and structure that they need for organization. Uh, boredom, it's there. I mean, um, many people like to have, a lot of people's activities have been taken away. If they like to go to like the movies, they like to go you know, play laser tag or paintball or anything socially related, that's all taken away from them. Uh, many, many places don't allow you to go golfing, even though we're in Arizona, they do allow you to go golfing because I guess that's essential for some reason, but hey, whatever. Um, but things, a lot of things have been taken away. So like the normal hobbies and things that people typically would do, or they did gather for book clubs or, or like go out with their friends, all that stuff's gone. So um, yeah, when you drive around on a Friday or Saturday night, it's desolate. There's no, <laughs> there's nowhere to go and there's nothing to do. There's no traffic. There's like, if, you know, there's you, the police, and like a few other handfuls of people that are out doing like going to either the pharmacy or whatever stores are open at that time. And so uh, boredom is there. And so this might be a good time to ask for you know, people to do like side projects or try to have people engage, but also watch out for that because, um, you know, that's, that's an indicator you need to look for. We'll talk about it in indicators in a, sec in a second. Anxiety, that, that's a big problem now too. Like I said, the control factor has been taken away from us. Like, and control is one of the things that many people that suffer from anxiety, that's the issue at hand is that they don't feel like they're in control. They feel like everything has been taken away from them. They have no kind of control over their lives and what's going on. It's, it's kind of true right now because every day we learn something different or it gets easier or better or worse. And we're just kind of living day by day, hoping that, you know, May 1st is this wonderful day that everything reopens, even though it probably won't be that type of situation for everybody. Uh, but it's, it's scary and people get anxiety and you want to make sure that you want, that's a current issue you need to facilitate and, and be ready for because a lot of people suffer from anxiety and depression. You want to make sure that huge bouts of loneliness and huge bouts of all that stuff is really, really bad. So anxiety can be a really big issue. And then uh, there's fear as well. So fear is just what the situation that we're going for and you want to make sure that that's kind of a thing there. All right, so those are the current issues that people are living in right now, and you want to make sure that you are really, really taking that into context for it. And that leads into the indicators to watch for, because these are all the current issues. Now, these are the indicators you need to really think about in order to watch and make sure it gets taken care of. Now, some indicators of them being outreached or having issues is low productivity and output. So... Uh, if you notice that people are not producing or not on the phones as much, not reaching out to clients, not interacting, things of that nature, or not making their metrics, that's an issue right there. And you should need to address it immediately and then get on the phone with them. Get in. Okay, so I was talking about uh, low productivity and output. Another thing to watch out for is missed meetings. If they're not getting into their uh, dialogue, if they're not actually you know, touching uh, base and actually miss, missing their meeting times with you, that's also an indicator you want to watch out for. I was telling about that too much time logged in and working is also an issue. You want people to get overwhelmed or overworked or just kind of burning themselves out. Uh, so if you notice that kind of indicator, you definitely want to address it and actually kind of think outside of the norm and, and create, facilitate ways of them to do more social interaction and working through it. Um, also, if, if deadlines are missed or finished way too fast, that's also an issue you want to uh, bring up as well, because if deadlines are missed, that means that they're not interacting enough, they're not doing the workload and their, their output and productivity is a little low. And if they're finishing it way too fast, it means that they might be bored and they're putting in way too many hours at a time. If, you uh, you know delegate a task that's supposed to take a week and they finish it in two days that's um they've been putting in way too many hours and then you're gonna work with them to do it also burn them so social norm for it um and now as far as uh you know, too much email and chat that information, that's an issue as well. So you want to make sure that you uh, take that into account and address it the same way. And that not enough communication is an issue too. If they just kind of go dark on you, um, make sure you do it as much as you can to pretty much go off of and watch for. So to kind of, for the overall portion of it, to kind of recap it, is so... The key things you want to take away when you're leading and managing in a remote-based environment is keep track 
of the metrics for your team, because those are the ways that you're going to be able to, having lots of lines of communication, get in touch with people. Uh, be very responsive and positive on a continuous basis because it's an unsecured time for people and it can promote anxiety and fear. And you want to make sure that while they're under your care, that they feel stable, happy, and that they have as much social dynamic as they can get. Um, keep them engaged, collaborating, keep them happy because you want that portion of them. Allow them to be social because that has been taken away from them outside of work. So you need to facilitate it the best you can within it. Um, but don't let it, you know, take over the entire job function, but it's not a bad thing to do, especially in this, these times. Uh, make them feel secure and in control uh, because like I said, that's been taken away and that's one of the biggest causes of depression and anxiety. So you want to make sure that that is something that you give back to them by allowing them to manage their day, that you also make them feel that they're secure in their job position and that everything is there and that you're there for them if you need to. And then don't email them to death. All right. Uh, lots and lots of emails, lots and lots of communication. Multiple channels will allow you to not have to rely on one and to make it too bad. Also don't medium to death either because that's getting, that gets old as well. Um, but that's that portion of it. And then, uh, so with that, that's my conclusion. Thank you for attending. My apologies if it cut out and at some point in time we had to restart. If there's any additional questions after this session, please feel free to reach out to me directly. That is my email address at um, masmith at uat.edu. Um, I'm happy to answer, banter back and forth or go over situations, circumstances, or scenarios. And with that, I will stop sharing. I'll give you back to me. And so is there any Q&A or any questions of there? Oh, again. I just put in the, the chat panel. Uh, feel free to put the questions in there. Um, there's also a Q&A. looks like we have one. Q&A, Kathy asked uh, if we can have a copy of the slides. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I can, can email them to me. I can send sure. them out. The yes, comments. I'll send them to JC and she'll have them available to you. Perfect. All right, any other questions? Kathy says, thank you. Uh, Dana asked, do you recommend a collaborative service? Uh, fair question. I actually, I don't. I mean, I haven't played with enough of them to, uh, to really have a good uh, session. I mean, if you're talking about more of like a conference-based setups, um, we work off of Teams, which has had a really good success. Zoom is, is also a meeting place as well that works really well. Um, they do have limitations if you don't have licensing for it. So um, you know, you just want to make sure you play within the realms that make sense and hopefully not have to repurchase or purchase additional licenses or things of that nature for things of that portion of it. Oh, you're welcome, Yasmin. Uh, and also Google Docs is always a, is something you can use for like collaborative documentation. Um, Discord is always a good communication platform if you don't have an IM based structure uh, as well. Uh, so and then kind of explore them out there. I'm sure there's new ones coming out all this thing, all the different times. Any other questions? Of course. <laughs> it's just in time, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, Lauren asked, if you're expecting things to be done more quickly, how can you address that? Uh, well, if, if, you're, if you're wanting that, then, uh, you know, just give the, I guess the, you know, if you're wanting that to happen as far as things get done more quickly, then of course reinforce that and, and you know, give them kudos and a good job and recognition for it. If you notice it is a pattern and it's not something you're expecting, um, I would probably prepare to have additional either work set aside for them to do so they don't get bored or idle, but it also would um, start setting, if you notice your team functioning a lot faster, I would, instead of increasing the workload if you don't have to or don't need to, to designate time for more team building and social interaction. So let's say if your team, if you're, you're noticing that your groups are getting done within days instead of weeks, then start bookmarking days to be just social interactions and coming up with team building games and social events to do online um, to that way to circumvent them to still have the structure, but also not just like giving them constant work to do and still give them recognition for getting their stuff done in, in time. And that seems to be a good uh, ploy or a play because uh, right now, like, I mean, you know, work-life balance is, is still a thing, but there's not really anything for people to really do outside, <laughs> outside of work and being at home right now. Um, it's very limited. So giving them things to do while they're at home during work hours is a good way of keeping the, the time strengths the same and keeping that time management organization the same, but also giving them a social interaction that they're not getting um, when they leave workload. Because typically when people chime out of their work home or at, uh, working from home, if they're just there with their family, which is great, but you know, the family, too much family time. Oh, 
probably conclude uh, today's presentation. Um, if you registered through Eventbrite, you will receive a copy of the slides. Uh, so thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Mark Smith, for a great presentation. I uh, definitely appreciate your time and expertise on this topic. Um, and if you have any other questions, again, you can follow up with him. His email address will be in the slides. It's masmith at uat.edu. Uh, but definitely feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, I work through Perimeter 83, but it is a part of uh, UAT. So um, definitely feel free to send me an email if you have anything and uh, look forward to the next presentation. So thank you so much. Thank you, Chairman. Have a good one.